I don't think I know a single family that hasn't been touched by addiction. And for those of us who also have a story of recovery, it is a gift worth commemorating. The Pittsburgh Recovery Walk celebrates the many roads to recovery from addiction and all those who travel them. This year's walk is Saturday, September 7th. It kicks off right across from the Heinz History Center at 9 a.m. and heads downtown and back. It's free. They would love to know that you're coming, but registration is not required. There's going to be music, speakers, kids' activities, food trucks, a resource fair, dogs are welcome. Plus, the whole route is handicap accessible. Learn more at pghrecoverywalk.org because every recovery story matters. Liberty Magic is magic, up close and sometimes very personal. They have an intimate, speakeasy-style performance space, and they just announced their new lineup for this year's season. Miguel Munoz will be there starting in October. Miguel is a circus artist and world champion of magic, and Nick Defot will take the stage in November. Nick is known for an offbeat sense of humor and some jaw-dropping stunts. It's all at Liberty Magic in the Cultural District. Get your tickets at trustarts.org slash magic before they disappear. Today on CityCast Pittsburgh, we're in that strange in-between seasons moment where pumpkin is starting to show up on seasonal menus, but it's still so hot it is sticky outside. If you need a soft landing into fall, you're in luck. We've got restaurant recommendations to satisfy any end of summer craving, plus how you can find a certain tropical tasting fruit native to Western Pennsylvania. And stick around after the show. Executive producer Mallory Falk will be jumping on for a conversation sponsored by the Institute for Research Education and training in addictions, all about an upcoming event, the Pittsburgh Recovery Walk. It's Thursday, August 29th. I'm Megan Harris, and here's what Pittsburgh's talking about. I'm with CityCast Sophia Lowe. Good morning. Good morning, Megan. <laughs> it's time for our favorite question of the week. What Absolutely. is the best thing that you have eaten recently? I think the team dinner at Spork has definitely been something I've been that thinking about night. all week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had this pasta with elk and pork. That was really fantastic. Also, the bread came with seaweed butter, which I have never thought of doing before. But that was super yummy. And I'm definitely going to make that at home now. You were not shy either. Reached right across the table. All of us sitting there. No one had even grabbed bread. Sophia's like, butter, mine now. I wait. I <laughs> waited like 10 seconds in my head. No one else was going for it. And I was just like, OK, <laughs> I'm hungry. Let's go. <laughs> the bread course at Spork was legit. Uh, total props for that. I forgot how much free free ish food you get while you sit there. Um, well, <laughs> since you picked them, I'll take us up north for a different fancy menu. There's a new place called Spear. Uh, it's pretty pricey, but they've got a more approachable happy hour menu that oh, I tried. God. So I got lobster sliders. Um, I didn't know what to expect portion wise, but they were two enormous lobster rolls Yum. overflowing with lobster. Uh, amazing butter to bread ratio. I feel like you'd appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I will definitely be back. But if you want to try uh, Sophia's recommendation, uh, you better hurry. Yeah, you better make it down to Spork before September 21st because uh, that's going to be their last dinner service before they close down, change up the space, change the menu. And we hear the new concept is going to be a set dinner menu and everyone's going to be sitting around one giant table. I can't imagine how they're going to reimagine that space to make that doable. So I'm excited to see what they dream up. <laughs> Me too. I hope they keep the garden, though, and keep pulling from that because, like, their little tomato snacks in between are fantastic. <laughs> Everything about that is, like, just, like, fun and kind of picturesque, you know, like, because that garden is tucked between uh, buildings with, it's like one of those old Pittsburgh houses with, like, four chimneys. I just love <laughs> it so much. Kind of in that, like, Garfield, Bloomfield uh, in between space. It's just, it's really nice over there. Yeah. And the reopening date is TBD. But once it's back, I'm sure we'll be talking about this on the show a little bit more, Megan mm -hmm. and the 
table what it actually looks like for you. Um, we also have a very long running list of new and revamped restaurants all on our website. That's pittsburgh.citycast.fm. It's under that food and drink tab at the top. Yeah. And I guess we kind of skipped ahead with the restaurant news. Uh, We'll come back to that. In the meantime, let's talk about seasonal fruit because it is the very beginning of pawpaw season here in Western Pennsylvania. I have never had one um, until last year. Friend of the pod reporter Brian Conway shared some with us. It was a very sweet gesture, but maybe I'm not a huge fan of the pawpaw. It might have just been too ripe for me. I also tried this pawpaw and spiceberry jam from Chantal's Cheese Shop. I like that much better than the fresh fruit itself. Yeah, I mean, I've been told that pawpaws can be kind of like bananas. Like if you like a ripe banana and you don't like them when they're underripe or green, then you might have a similar taste profile. I am the reverse. I want a banana okay. like seconds <laughs> after it stops being crunchy. Um, and I tried an extremely ripe pawpaw and didn't love it. So I would try again. OK, so we just need less ripe pawpaws then. Possibly for our palates, uh, but other people <laughs> might love them ripe. Anyway, these fruits are native to the Pittsburgh area, um, but they have like this tropical taste. That's why we're using the banana comparison. We'll yeah. let newsletter editor Francesca DeBecco share a little bit more about what pawpaws taste like because she geeks out over them every season. It's really fun. Um, And when you slice it open, it has multiple black seeds and a custard-like filling uh, that people often describe as a cross between a banana and a mango. And that's actually how it got the nickname uh, Banango, which I think is just so fun to say. (laughs) So you can actually find them growing out in the wild, uh, around the city, around the county. The trees grow really well by rivers and streams and in floodplains. They're usually part of like an understory, so they grow like... 20 feet or so tall under a bunch of other bigger trees. Mm -hmm. I think this is really cool, too. They have this pretty well accepted like tree companion or tree associate relationships. Are you familiar with this? Kind of. It's like when one like plant grows better when it's near another one, right? Yeah, I just love the idea of like tree friendships like this. (laughs) This brings me great joy. Um, So, yeah, if you aren't familiar with a pawpaw by like its bark or its leaves, which, of course, you can look it up online, um, you can sometimes find them in the right conditions next to these other friend trees. Uh, So around here, those can be like a sycamore, a sugar maple, buckeyes, tulip poplar. There's a bunch more. So if you see a pawpaw's friends, it might be hanging out in the region, too. Now I need to learn what like five trees look like. <laughs> no, not just one, but multiple. Yeah, I hear like the pawpaws sort of blend in because they're not super big. They can fit pretty comfortably in the palm of your hand. Yeah, they kind of remind me of like an unripe walnut. Uh, have you ever seen those? They're like those little green sort of mm-hmm. like the size. Yeah, yeah. Bling. They're not quite as big as like a baseball or a tennis ball, uh, but they're more oval. Uh, they grow in clusters, uh, kind of like coconuts. That's what it sort of reminds me of. And then they fall when they're ripe. Um, when they're ripe, I guess they're a little bit more of a yellow brown. I've been told repeatedly not to fret about bruises, but that goes against every grocery store like norm I've ever learned. So I think I'll have to retrain myself on that one. Mm, yeah, same here. I think I've gotten less picky about bruises now that I'm getting more farmer's market fruit. Good. And sometimes they just kind of bang up around each other as I'm carrying them back home. Yeah, I don't care when it's peaches. So maybe that's just the same like sensibility I have to take with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, pawpaws don't grow just here around Pittsburgh. They're found in a big chunk of the eastern U.S. Actually, you can find them in parts of the south, all around Appalachia. And we're kind of up at the most northern range of pawpaw trees. I will pass it to Francesca again to talk about how long the fruit's been around. So fossils show that pawpaws have been around for like 23 million years, far before humans. Actually, um, at the Meadowcroft Shelter out in Avela, PA, uh, the oldest site of human habitation in North America, um, they found fossils of pawpaws there. Pawpaws are rooted in indigenous foodways and traditions. Iroquois people mix them into sauces and corn cakes. Cherokee people use the tree fibers in the inner bark to make rope and string. The Allegheny Front did an awesome story last year on the Shawnee tribe. They mark time by phases of the moon and they use the fruit to mark one of those phases. That That's in September when it's time to go pick them. 
And we'll link that Allegheny front piece in our show notes. It's from 2021. And if now you're all excited to try Paw Paws here. And you don't want to go foraging for them on your own. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's totally true. Uh, well, Grow Pittsburgh does a few Paw Paw parties each season. Um, so in addition to sampling the fruit, you can also learn about zebra swallowtail butterflies. It is totally free to attend. And there's a few dates. You can go on September 3rd, 17th, or the 24th. All of these run from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Yeah, we've got a bunch of all of this information sort of collected in one spot on our website now, too. We'll link it in the show notes, or of course, you can go to pittsburgh.citycast.fm. Totally. And there's also some regional pawpaw parties if you want to travel and make a whole weekend out of it. There is the 126th Ohio Pawpaw Festival, uh, September 13th to 15th. It's at Lake Snowden. So about three and a half hours away. Tickets for the full weekend are $60. And then there's another thing on the other side of the state in York. Uh, they have a whole Paw Paw Festival. So it's Saturday, September 28th. A few different ticket options. It looks like depending on whether you want to park on site or take a shuttle. Um, but there's all kinds of things to do in York that weekend. A um, bunch of local food events all from like Thursday to Sunday. So you could really make a time of it. Nice. And if you just want to eat a pawpaw in the comfort of your own kitchen, last year, Francesca found some at the East End Food Co-op. And uh, sometimes other Pittsburgh restaurants have some pawpaw items on their menus. If you see any cool pawpaw items and you want to let us know, please reach out to us. Our email is pittsburgh at citycast.fm. Yeah, or you can text us. We won't answer. Uh, (laughs) 412-212-8893. Whether it's going to school, to the grocery store, or crossing a bridge to get to work, we all need an efficient way to get from A to B. The Airport Corridor Transportation Association, aka ACTA, wants to make that journey a little easier for us. The Ride ACTA shuttle connects riders from the IKEA Superstop over in Robinson to over 275 businesses, including Settlers Ridge, the Mall at Robinson, and the Homewood Suites by the Mall. Plus, they have an app, Ride ACTA. ACTA is committed to accessible, affordable, and sustainable travel solutions. The buses themselves are very cute. And their whole process is smooth, efficient, and it will keep you away from a steering wheel on Parkway West traffic. The whole idea is honestly genius. So it makes sense that they've offered nearly 850,000 rides in the last 15 years. Check it out for yourself at actapgh.org. That's A-C-T-A-P-G-H dot org. The land down under has never been easier to reach. United Airlines has more flights between the U.S. and Australia than any other U.S. airline. So you can fly nonstop to destinations like Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. Explore dazzling cities, savor the very best of Aussie cuisine, and get up close and personal with the wildlife. Who doesn't want to hold a koala? Go to united.com slash Australia to book your adventure. Since it's been so hot, hot, hot this week, I think we need to kick off our openings and closing section with some ice cream news. Dave and Andy's in Oakland is reopening on September 7th. Technically a tentative opening. I saw that. Uh, So we'll have to keep an eye on their Instagram in case anything changes. Uh, But yeah, Dave and Andy's uh, is reopening, apparently. In case you missed it, they closed at the end of April because the owner, Andy Hardy, wanted to retire after keeping the place up and running for 40 years. I mean, I think I think he earned it. Yeah, very understandable. But it seems like a lot of people were sad about this. I mean, I'd be too if I'd been going to this place for years and years. So I'm glad it's reopening for everyone. And also, I have heard very good things and I did not have time to check it out before it shut down earlier. So I am glad I will get to try this Pittsburgh institution. Yeah, I I have to confess, I have also never been. um, So I'm right in the same boat. The Trib wrote about the opening, uh, and it's just such a cute, sweet story um, because a couple here, Jason and Laura Kasten, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, say they had their first date there. And now Jason and his daughter, Sarah, are going to be the new owners. Sophia, I feel like you would really appreciate this. Sarah told the Trib that they're a, quote, sweet tooth family, end quote. Love it. So now that Dave and Andy's is under new ownership, are we expecting any changes? 
It doesn't look like it. Um, the castings have said that the shop will still be called Dave and Andy's, mm-hmm. uh, and the recipe for the ice cream is going to stay the same. Um, so it seems like they are super fans who just want to preserve this space that was really special to them. Cool. I wish I had the money to revive every business I have loved and lost. <laughs> Same here. (laughs) Uh, But more good news with openings, I think. Uh, Brothmonger is getting a brick and mortar shop in Bloomfield. Friend of the pod. Brothmonger. Yes, I am also so thrilled about this. Uh, The store is going to be on Liberty Avenue where Pad Thai Noodle used to be. Brothmonger, a.k.a. Sarah McAlley, has been posting updates on the Brothmonger Instagram page. There isn't an exact opening date yet, but I stopped by the time machine window for some of her sandwiches during Little Italy days, and she said they're hoping to open in October. Yeah, the photos that she's been posting online are just really cute. Um, It all seems like it's going to be perfect for soup season. Mm -hmm. If you do want to get started a little early, we talked to Sarah uh, on a couple of previous food shows. She gave us all sorts of great tips for making soups. Um, She was one recommendation for a sausage tortellini. That's like a good one for beginners if you're a little nervous about cooking. And also, I want to shout out Sarah's newsletter, The Broth Mailer, uh, Mm -hmm. which shares recipes a lot. So I have made a bunch of the stuff that she shared in that and it always hits. I am subscribed to that newsletter, yet I keep just buying the soup from her. One day I will make it myself. Yeah. You're focused on making cookies, Sophia, and that is its own (laughs) gift to the world. One day I will make cookies and soup. Well, moving (laughs) on to some restaurants that are already open. Francesca recently checked out Alberta's Pizzeria. Uh, You might have seen their food truck uh, around over the years, but they have a physical location. It's on the north side. Yeah, she says the pizza's got like a really nice texture, so crispy and chewy. Uh, Francesca's food reviews are always extremely detailed. Uh, She recommended the zucchini fries as well. Yum. And we also got a note from listener Isabella End about a couple new coffee shops we missed in our roundup last time. I love it. Please keep telling us what we missed. It really does help. We don't we don't get to see everything and we're trying to let the folks know what's good. Yeah, very much appreciated. Isabella's first recommendation was Heat Check in Shady Side, and this place looks so cool. It is a coffee shop and vintage store just opened, and um, you can get your drink and browse clothes all in the same place. Yeah, I'm looking at their Instagram now. A uh, bunch of T-shirts, vintage sweatshirts, Steelers merch, um, all kinds of stuff. It looks like that you can kind of like look through here while also getting your caffeine hit. I can't wait to check it out. I'm glad there's going to be coffee in one hand because otherwise I'd probably take too many clothes. (laughs) Yeah, it really does like limit how many things you can put on your arm. (laughs) But if you want just coffee, no clothing, there's also Dynamic X Defer on the High Line. It used to be just Defer, but now the coffee shop sells Dynamic Coffee. So that's grown in Honduras and then roasted in Pittsburgh. So if you're really into specific types of coffee beans, that could be a cool place to check out. Yeah, I've been over there. It was before Dynamic got involved. Um, It can be a little tricky to get into the space, but if you persevere, caffeine does await you. Yes. Thank you again to Isabella for all of these recommendations. Uh, Once again, if there is a new restaurant you want to recommend, please do not hesitate to let us know. You can DM us on Instagram at citycastpgh, email us at pittsburgh at citycast.fm, or leave us a voicemail or text us. Again, never going to answer you. 412-212-8893. Yes, so many ways to reach out. We love hearing from you all. Always, always, always appreciate more food racks. Uh, But moving on to closings, the Atria's in Pleasant Hills is closing on September 1st. Uh, But in October, another restaurant's going to be moving in, Juniper Grill. Yeah, so they're both chains. Um, They both have the same parent company. There's still a few Atria restaurants in the area, like in Murraysville and Mount Lebanon. But the Trib reports that the Mount Lebo location is going to be getting some updates. So the restaurant's going through a little rebrand in October. And the new name is going to be 1930 by Atria. Um, So I guess that's the year that the original restaurant got started. Oh, I didn't realize that had been around for that long. That's cool. Me either. And then one more closing. The Buca de Beppo's in Station Square closed down earlier this summer. So one fewer spot for family style Italian. It was actually the last Buca de Beppo in the Western Pennsylvania region. So if that's a beloved chain spot for you, you will need to head out of the region to satisfy your pasta craving, unfortunately. Yeah, I was kind of curious about this. So the closest one to us now is in Cleveland. Oh, (laughs) sad. Um, So let's end on a higher note than that. Uh, Sophia, what is an upcoming food event that you think people should know about? 
If you are into wrestling, I think Taco Mania could be super fun. So this is on Sunday, September 1st. Uh, it's at Allegheny Commons from noon to six. So lots of taco trucks, live music, beer if you're 21 or older. And then mm-hmm. also Pittsburgh Pro Wrestling is all part of this. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, I think so too. It's totally free to watch and food and drink are pay as you go. And before we go, there are also just so many festivals coming up this weekend. Um, We'll probably do a show on some of the great fall ones coming up. Um, But a couple to think about this weekend. uh, Taste of Grease in McCandless, Rib Fest at Acrisure, and Soul Food Festival in Market Square. It is going to be a busy weekend if you're trying to follow that entire itinerary. Pack your peps in. Don't forget. Don't go anywhere if you're listening to us now. In just a second, we've got a segment sponsored by the Institute for Research, Education, and Training in Addictions. Executive producer Mallory Falk is chatting with Rachel Schuster, a person in long-term recovery and a certified addictions registered nurse who's representing the upcoming Pittsburgh Recovery Walk. I'm Mallory Falk, executive producer at CityCast Pittsburgh, here with Rachel Schuster, who's representing the Pittsburgh Recovery Walk. Hey, Rachel. Hello. Thank you for having me. You know, it's summer. The weather here is beautiful. There are all sorts of walks and runs and marches and even bike rides going on this summer. But the Pittsburgh Recovery Walk is pretty special. Can you start just by explaining what the Recovery Walk is and what it aims to do? Sure. Sure. The Pittsburgh Recovery Walk is a free, family-friendly annual event that's so much more than just a walk. The purpose of our event is to celebrate the many roads of recovery from addiction and all those who travel them. Specifically, the walk aims to celebrate recovery and recovery supports, to eliminate stigma towards people personally impacted by addiction, and to showcase the many resources for recovery support health, and harm reduction in our region. And how does the Recovery Walk actually define recovery? We subscribe to the same working definition of recovery as SAMHSA, or the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, in that recovery is a process of change through which individuals improve their health and wellness, live a self-directed life, and strive to reach their full potential. The Pittsburgh Recovery Walk honors everyone's personal experience with addiction and recovery. Whatever your path is and wherever you are on that path, we're here to celebrate that. And so we celebrate all roads to recovery, which we know are just as varied as the actual roads in Pittsburgh. Some are bumpy, some are steep, and some are less traveled. All are a cause for celebration. And the more we know about these roads, the more we can provide useful support to those who need help. Recovery is not only possible, but it's probable. That's such a good analogy. Uh, I want to get into specifics now. Where and when is the Recovery Walk happening? And, you know, what can people expect when they attend? Yeah, the ninth annual Recovery Walk will be held on Saturday, September 7th from 9 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon at 1201 Waterfront Place in the parking lot across from the Heinz History Center. The event will also be live streamed on our website, on YouTube, and on Facebook for people who may not be able to come in person. And again, our event is so much more than just a walk. We're going to have music, speakers, recovery awards, food trucks, and lots of activities for the whole family, including a bounce house, face painting, balloon animals, giant games, and a juggler on stilts. We also all will have a resource fair featuring over 80 sponsors and community groups. We anticipate a crowd of over 2,500 people, and we're going to have free t-shirts and other giveaways. The walk itself starts around 1130 in the morning, and it's about one mile in length through downtown Pittsburgh. And I know you have a personal connection to this topic. You're in long-term recovery, and you're also a nurse who specializes in addiction. What does the Pittsburgh Recovery Walk mean to you personally? The Pittsburgh Recovery Walk is incredibly meaningful to me on both personal and professional levels. As someone in long-term recovery, it represents a celebration of resilience, community, and the ongoing journey of recovery. Since getting involved in 2018, I've had the privilege of serving on various committees, sharing my own recovery story, and even being honored with the Recovery Pathway Supporter Award in 2021. This event brings together this entirely diverse group of people, those that are in recovery, their families, their friends, and allies. 
Attending the walk each year with my husband and my son is something I look forward to as it not only reaffirms my own recovery, but allows me to connect with and support others on their journeys. And as a nurse specializing in addictions, the Pittsburgh Recovery Walk also reinforces my commitment to advocating for and supporting those affected by substance use disorders. What's the Recovery Walk's hope for the future of the recovery community here in the Pittsburgh region? Our hope for the future of the recovery community in the Pittsburgh region is multifaceted. First and foremost, we hope that treatment, resources, and support become universally accessible so anyone seeking help can find it without barriers, recognizing that recovery is not one size fits all and every journey is valid. We also deeply hope that we can eliminate the stigma surrounding addiction, allowing all individuals in recovery to live free of shame and isolation, a community where people feel supported, accepted, and celebrated by the greater Pittsburgh area would be a beautiful achievement. Ultimately, we envision a future where the recovery community is not just a subset of the population, but fully integrated and valued within the broader Pittsburgh community. Where can people go if they want to learn more about the recovery walk? You can visit pghrecoverywalk.org to learn more about our event and to register. While registration is not required, we do encourage it. And our website also includes information on sponsorship and volunteer opportunities. Lastly, you can also follow us on Facebook, X, previously known as Twitter, and Instagram. Our handle is at pghrecoverywalk. Rachel Schuster, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. And again, you can check out pghrecoverywalk.org to learn more. We'll have a link for you in the show notes as well, so you're just a click away. Thank you for listening. That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. Do not sleep on our Hey Pittsburgh newsletter. If you like the food shows, make sure you are subscribed. There's even more food and drink content on Thursdays and Fridays. Sign up in our show notes or online. It's pittsburgh.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Talk to you soon. Speaking of which, I think I said Bolognese. I try to say that really <laughs> fast, raw as sport, because I was like, I'm gonna screw this up. I was just like, gonna point. I like heard you say it and did not think a that it was wrong, and also was proud of you for just okay, cool, with it. cool. You said it with with utter confidence.